uh, last week in games, but we'll see how the events to go. And this week, Rich, um, which helps out the white team, um, is going to be sharing a little bit of his story. So, guys, give him a good talk. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Um, yeah, this week is a little different than my last week. Um, it scores a little farther oh, start apart. That's okay. Don't get discouraged. Uh, please, you know, keep your. Uh, Game on a level ground if you could. It's been really nice. I want to welcome you guys back that were here in the years past. Um, how many of you guys knew this year? 25? 32. 32, 30. Wow, that's awesome. Um, I want to congratulate some of you guys got married during the offseason. We had some babies added to the league this year, future up and coming players. And, you know, we got some new guys going to church. We found out some guys that come to know the Lord. Um, since the last time we met a year ago, which is awesome. What I'd like to do this week is I'm going to piggyback off something Brian did last week. Um, I was just trying to give you two weeks, not because we can't fill the spots, but one week I talk to the men and then the other week I share my testimony. Tonight I'm going to talk to you guys. Um, Brian last week talked about our spiritual father, God. Um, some of you here tonight have a relationship with him, personal, had it for years. Some of you guys are new. Um, throughout our Christian walk, uh, we grow as Christians. Um, we pull guys along, guys pull us along. As we get older, sometimes we don't get wiser, but we pull guys along due to the faith. And that's a little bit what this basketball program is about. You guys are here tonight. There's nothing more satisfying to me as a Christian and as a believer that God brings guys here to this church where I don't have to search my own to share my faith with them. You're here. I got you for 10 minutes, 50 minutes. After 50 minutes, Brian's pulling the plug on the mic, so, which is okay. Uh, I'll get you know, through this as, as quick as possible. Tonight, I'm going to talk about your earthly father, the guys you grew up with. Now, in this room, probably 85% of you come from integrated families. What I mean by that is you're birth mother and father are either divorced or were never married and you were raised by step parents or grandparents. Not that that's wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's not. Because I was raised with my natural father and he was as far as being a father as you could get. Okay? But I don't hold that against him. I learned later on in life that he taught me some things that I do now that I didn't even realize. And one thing about being a father being a husband, is it something that is a godly and marriage is a godly institution. Marriage is something that was brought in to our life, our earthly life, through the scriptures. It's in the Bible, that's where it started. Uh, in today's society, it's taken for granted. It's so easy just to pack your bags and roll. But gentlemen, I gotta be honest with you, the repercussions that happen to the children in divorces. It's amazing. Everybody saw the shooting this week at the courthouse. You know, we all we all read it out. We read about it all week. That's how it started with the kids in custody. And now two people are dead, two people were shot, three people are dead. So divorce really lays into the kids. Now for those of you who don't know, this is my grandson Kyrie. There's no way standing up there. She's gonna get a little embarrassed she'll shoot me out and get her. But that's okay. Um, Kyrie's father has not been in his life one day. And he didn't know I was going to do this tonight. And God has put him and me together. And I love this kid. I really do. Um, I'm not his blood grandfather. But God has given me the responsibility as not only a spiritual mentor, but as a mentor um, as a father. Because he doesn't have that in his life per se, his birth father. And not that he, I never say anything bad about him, because that says itself. Um, I'm not going to judge him. That's not my way. But gentlemen, every one of you guys in here, hopefully, some of you have kids now, some of you have kids on the way, children, some of you down the road might have children. It's, it's a lifelong commitment that you make it's, it's so easy to talk tail and run you get in arguments and things happen 
in your life that everything always looks better if you just weren't in the situation you're in. But John, I'm going to be honest with you. It's exactly the way I used to think. It's exactly how I thought things would be so much easier if I didn't have the burden of raising children, if I didn't have the burden of being married. But now, as I got older, I've been married to my wife now for seven years. And this is the first time I got married as a true believer and having a relationship with Jesus Christ at the same time. And it makes a difference. Because some of you here tonight are living godly lives, you're going to church, you're involved in men's Bible studies, um, you children look up to you and want to be like you. And those are things that are just, in my mind, are awesome. There's two, two scriptures that I hold dear to my heart. First one I learned probably a week after I got saved. I got saved in 2003. May 31st, with eight, I was with 18,000 men at a Promise Keeper Center on Baltimore, Maryland. And my life changed that day forever. Um, my lifestyle wasn't as gratifying as I'd like, and I'm going to share that with you later. Um, after I got saved, um, I asked God to give me a year to get my life straightened out. Because I was living, you know, a lot of lives probably like you guys are, out of control. You know, my parents died within 24 hours of each other. My mother died of cancer, my father shot himself in the head right in front of me. So, I know what it's like to live through tragedy. God got me through some of that, and I'm, I'm still living um, part of that tragedy. It's something you never forget. But with God's grace and His love, He has shown me what it's like to be a real father. And I try to set myself as an example to Kyrie, because God is a father that will never leave you, never forsake you. Brian shared this with last week. He's always there. You know, I wish I could say that about our earthly fathers. And that's why I challenge you guys. And it doesn't have to be your own natural blood children. There's people that you know that have kids that are struggling. They just want somebody to trust. You know, I, I think about that all the time. Or where this boy with life would be if he didn't have a man in his life that was leading him. And not just me, there's other godly men in this church that have taken a promise and they took their membership vows. To raise this child to fear, love, and know God like they do. And that's important. That's going to be important to you guys. You know, I want to challenge each of you. Some of you are here for just basketball. To be honest with you, I can care less about basketball. I'm here because I am concerned about your salvation, where your heart is with the Lord. And it's my job, God, to Jesus gave you two commandments to love thy neighbor. Tell the world about it. And that's where I come in. I share with all you guys, you guys have been new. Don't be afraid to come to me. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The ladies do. I'm sure we got somebody here that, you know, we could get you to the side and answer any questions that you might have. But the two scriptures I have, one is from Romans. Um, it says that we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. And all is the word in them that sticks out every time. All things, good and bad. Being a Christian, my life hasn't been this pocket full of money and everything happens good. It rains on the rich, it rains on the poor. Okay? So, you know, I want to encourage you guys to try to get involved somewhere, not just here at basketball. You're not here by chance of faith. You're here because God wants you here. Some of you understand that, some of you don't. That's what, you know, that's what you do. The second scripture comes from Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And it's, it's by uh, grace you've been saved through faith, and it's not of yourself, and not by your works, lest any man should boast, meaning that your eternal life comes by something that God gives you. No matter how good you are in basketball, no matter how good a father you are, how hard you work, it doesn't matter. It's trust in Jesus Christ alone. For your eternal life. There's no other way to heaven through it, but except through that. You, you know, and who sets the standards? Brian shared this with you guys last week. 
God sets the standards. If basketball was a getting into heaven, I'm going to hell tomorrow. Some of you guys have seen me play at Florida. I played this late the first year. I saw him off the second year of preseason. I was done. Not that I didn't want to play, but the talent in this league has gone through the roof. And yeah, I like to come here. I like to be a part of this. I like to be a part of the guys. But also, I'm concerned about your salvation and where you guys are going. We are going to have a church Sunday here for this basketball league. Okay, well, we're going to invite you guys to please come. Because to us, it's not just basketball, it's a ministry. And we can reach out. We want you guys to trust us, for one thing. Things that are said, Brian is talking to any of the guys in this league. Things that are gone behind the scenes where they needed to somebody to talk to. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. Don't think nobody's going to say anything about you. And don't go no farther than us, or me, or Brian. Okay, I asked Brian a couple weeks for whenever it's convenient for him. I'll share my testimony and how I come to know about Jesus Christ. Because he has given me a beautiful wife, a grandson, his sister, younger sister Jada. You know, and it means a lot to me. This young man last year, the Monday after Easter, gave his heart to the Lord. I know he's going to heaven. That's my legacy. Gotta ask yourself that. What's your legacy with your children? What are they gonna be able to say? This is what my dad did. This is what my grandfather did. This is what he passed on to me. Basketball's gonna come and go. But your eternal life forever. I right? can be grateful. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this night that you blessed us with. And Lord, as I stare at these gentlemen, I'm honored to be here as the representative of Jesus Christ to talk to each one of these men. Um, the Lord, that one of their hearts is just one guy here, one lady here, one child here that is searching. Lord, I hope their hearts strike tonight. I know this isn't about basketball with me uh, and with some of the other guys who are involved in this league, but it's about you. Lord, we hope that this league is glorifying to you. That's why we call it ministry and not a basketball league. So Lord, bless the rest of this evening, the ones that are leaving, I ask that you give them safe travels home. Lord, the ones we continue to play, I pray that you keep them safe and free from injury. But Lord, most of all, I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. It's his name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.